Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, we are live here on the floor of Amazon Web Services reInvent Conference. So the Cube is starting to do their own events. And I'm joined by two awesome guests here, tech athletes, luminaries, who at VMworld this year were you know, all tight-lipped about this, their company, <laughs> Lumio, PJ Kruger, CTO and founder, and Alan Cohen, Chief Commercial Officer, CMO, but you're, a, you're a, uh, you know, the janitor too in the startups. And all Absolutely. All. Guys, welcome to uh, reInvent theCUBE. Yeah, great Thanks, to great to be here. So Lumio, let's go right into the company. So for the folks out there watching, um, very you know, hyped up startup because they were in such a super secret stealth mode. Um, hyped up in a good way, they had great reputations, a lot of scuttlebutt and back channeling in Silicon Valley around you know, this technology, star team, a lot of capital markets groping for the deal, which is you know, you know, chum in the waters, if you will, in Silicon Valley. But you guys are pretty confident, had a swagger at VMworld, and um, you, you took the lid off everything. So let's go through that. So PJ, tell us um, the core product and the launch. What happened? Um, what was it all about? How did it all get started? Why this launch was so architected to be so stealthy? Um, I mean, what's really happening is data centers are becoming more dynamic and distributed, right? And there is there is a lot of change going on. The you know new applications coming. They're scaling. There's all of these things that are creating a lot of uh, a lot of change and, and interesting. And you needed a security platform that was designed from the ground up to actually be able to adapt to it and, and, and manage that. So Alan, you were always teasing me, you got to get in the cube, we got to talk about this, now you're out there, right? So yeah. I want you to just rewind a little bit okay. before you get into some of the, the factoids, because um, having a clean sheet of paper is one of the things that people talk about right now is a competitive advantage in this innovation cycle, which is data center in the cloud, which Amazon's trying to, to win that game. But as, an, as entrepreneurs and technologists, that's a challenge. So take us through, was it a clean sheet of paper? You guys can come, I want you to comment on, this ground up product. Well, I, Was it a spark that said, hey, I, you know. Well, I mean, so, so PJ and Andrew uh, Rubin, the two co-founders, found each other kind of in, in uh, through a serendipitous way. Um, both guys come from a security background and an infrastructure background. Um, and I think, as PJ was just saying, what we recognize is that security would have to mirror the computing model that's evolving, which is distributed, which is divorced from the infrastructure for the most part, which is software or software defined. And the only way you could do that is by inverting the model. So the traditional model in security was around choke points and, and the infrastructure and actually physical boxes or software, run, you know, a box running on a piece of software. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work. So as we started to engage with now literally over 100 customers over the last two years, we realized a whole bunch of things. First of all, we're in a post-virtualization world. It's not about physical or virtual or cloud or data center, right? It's really about anything working anywhere because it's, these are strictly choices people make about their computing. It's about doing things very rapidly and it was about doing things in a way that they're going to have confidence and trust, right? We're all here, you know, Amazon's got a $5 billion business that's growing extremely quickly. Well, that's what, that's what you think, yeah. it could be more. Could be more, <laughs> could be 10. And, but if people have more confidence, then it's good, it could be 20 or 40. Um, so people, we're only kind of one or two uh, depreciation cycles from people talking about infrastructure as a device as opposed to really basically a set of processing capabilities to do a bunch of functions. P PJ, I want you to comment yeah. on, a, on that thread. I want to double down on that with you because when I talked with Steve Herrod at the VMworld, you know, he was talking about perimenos IT, kind of teasing a little, yeah, teasing yeah, that yeah, a little yep. bit. That's basically what you're doing. But when I sit down, I also talk to Andy Jassy, and I talk to the folks in the government, well, who are also here today, CIA, Health and Human Services, and, and their chief security officer, you know, they're misunderstood. Amazon is one of the most misunderstood companies because they're turning the world upside down. So you guys are kind of in the same, cut from the same cloth with Amazon. You know, disruptors but innovators at the same time, which is a hard trick to balance. As a startup, they're a little bit off, their, off the, uh, the platform a little bit, they're growing like a rocket ship, but you guys are that same kind of company. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, I love being here. I've been here three times. I've been to all the shows. Um, and, I mean, these are where people are actually, you know, cha I mean, changing the world, change the way things are happening. The, the idea of, of you know, there, there's, there's this concept of DevOps, DevOpsSec, right, which is the combination, which is breaking down the walls between the development cycle, the operational cycle, and the security cycle, and that's really what needs to happen. Um, and, you know, what Illumio's done is sort of, built a security product that actually works within that world and works the way people well, want to work. And, and you know, if you think about it, John, Amazon broke the perimeter. They ended the perimeter. Yeah, they, totally. I mean, they, so they released the crack in our term, right? They they, they unleashed well, the crack, crack in the computing. Explain this crack in toy. Well, the cra well, this is not a toy, this is our mascot. So, look, if you remember your- Godzilla, I predicted Godzilla. Yeah, no, it's the crack, and if you think about Greek mythology, right, when, when, when the gods basically let loose, they released the Kraken. So we believe that by, by breaking down the perimeter and basically unshackling computing from physical place and physical infrastructure, they've released the Kraken. What we're, we're, we've actually provided is actually the security so you could deal with the Kraken. That's why we talk about the so Kraken. the crack always brings up drugs, you know, hand out the crack for customers, but just, let's talk about that. Let's Are you about, talking to a vendor about crack? There's no crack about, here, there's let, no Kool-Aid. Let's, no, let's talk about the crack. Because yeah. Perimeter, the perimeter is dead. I would agree that yeah. the Kraken has definitely been out for a while. Um, and the security holes right now are so massive in IT. I mean, the breaches alone and incidents are up. Incidents are up big time. There's a lot of breaches. You're seeing it every day. And so people are sitting there scratching their heads saying, holy shit, what do I do, right? So how do you guys solve that problem and share with where you're at in the product? Well, because some will say, hey, this is a hyped up startup. There's no real product there. Well, Take us I through mean, that. Let's break, let's break I mean, this down. I mean, yeah. You're right. It's the it's the soft and chewy inside problem, right? I mean, things get through in through the you know in through what is left of the perimeter, and then they just get to go wherever they they want to. And you know what we've done, and and we've actually um, we've put product in in uh, our customers' hands for you know 14 months now, 14 releases of the product. We've actually got people to use the product, you know, work with the customers to help understand what their problems were understand how they wanted to use the product, what they needed, and we, you know, we've built something pretty amazing. I mean, whether, whether I mean, and when, and when uh, you talk uh, about you the- You guys have paying customers now? We, yes, actually all our customers in our launch were paying. That includes Morgan Stanley, Plantronics, um, Yahoo, CAA, CAA and um, I miss, who did I miss? That's pretty good validation. You got yeah. investors that pay you for equity, yes. and customers that pay you for value. Well, I mean, and I think to PJ's point, this didn't happen overnight. This took over a year of working with some of these folks to, re to really bring this along the line. They have enormous issues, and you know what, their issues are not homogeneous, okay. so, right? So take, before we get yeah. into some of the comments, I want to yeah. show on the customers, just take back the timeline. So just for the record, when did it start? You mentioned it, you, know, you did some developments, so it's not like you guys did it in the garage, threw it out there. Talk about the seed funding, the A, a round funding, right. how long ago, how much in development? So, so, and so the, the company was officially formed in January of 13. We raised $8 million from Andreessen Horowitz, um, PJ and Andrew and a bunch of folks started writing code. I actually joined these guys about five months later, uh, and we raised another $34 million. Ben Verghese came over from VMware, who's employee number 50. Steve Herod led that round, and then Mark Benioff, Jerry Yang, and John Thompson, who just joined our board, um, joined the round. And so, uh, we, but, so we were pretty much heads down, basically working with customers and delivering code for the last few years. You're smiling, I'm making you I happy. I like Steve Herod, man, he's yeah. a great investor. We One like him too. the smartest guys on the planet. So, you know, so the investors are solid. Yeah. So, I mean, Andreessen, they'll throw money at anything, but, but you guys have, you know, uh, a good team, so that's their mojo, eight million with a team. Yeah. I can see them throwing money at it. Now you got the team, you got the bank going. What goes on with the product? What happened next? PJ, share with us that, mm. I mean, I don't mean Andreessen throws money at anything, they actually don't, but when they see a good team, they'll write an eight million dollar check. Right, and that's what, I mean, we, we really took that, and we took a practical approach to sort of solving the problem. We knew it was a complicated problem, and, you know, we just, we, we weren't, we needed to engage with the customer, work with them, right? So that about five months in, we actually uh, you know, delivered some products to some initial customers, and you know, help them understand, you know, help us understand what the complexities were about what this, I mean, this dynamic data center, right? And and all the, like, the static security model is kind of broken, and there was this gap forming between those. So two what was the reaction of the customers? Take us through the emotional and like the response. Were you guys like nervous? Well, we were like, well, oh, shit, they might not like it, or we hope it'll be a home run. Well, so so. I remember one. You know, there was one session we did, and you know, we sort of pitched. Okay, here's the big idea, right? And, and we knew we couldn't do everything. There's no way you can do everything. You know? And so we sort of took this little, this little slice of what we thought was valuable. What really struck me was when we actually delivered that to customers. Customers said, "Oh yeah, okay, I get your big story. I get it. But that one thing that you gave me first, I really need that right now. 
right? And that's what kind of started the whole thing and lit the fire. Yeah, that was yeah. like how Splunk started too. I mean, Splunk had this yeah. great vision, they had this little tool that everyone wanted, exactly. and then kicked in. So that's yeah. good. So Alan, take us through where it goes from there, because now you start to get into, like, this thing has legs. Right. right? So then... Well, there's, there's, there's two things you should understand. The first thing is we will show everybody everything that's happening in their data center in Amazon. It's a view of all their computing that they've never had before, and knowledge is powerful. The second thing that we do is we're constantly recomputing the security. So unlike a device, and we we're talking about a firewall or an IDS device, the traditional security discussion, we're constantly recomputing the topology. So we're actually a little bit more like Google, the company's built on top of math, and that's really where, where PJ is. So what we're going to do over the next couple of years is take on in more context, more inf information, and constantly recompute people's postures and make it much more effective, much more locked down, and allow them to have a, a great degree of confidence to take advantage of massive infrastructure that's available with a push of a button from a company like Amazon or inside their own data center. And, yeah. th and those are really the insights. I mean, one is understanding the relationships of what's had happening behind, you know, behind the perimeter in your data center. People don't know. There's lots of stuff going on. There's been lots of changes. There's lots of times. There's pe there's startups running millions of miles an hour. They don't know. So well, also the API economy, just an idea of notifications, mobile infrastructure right. is really not hardened out. So you have this kind of like gaping holes, small little cracks everywhere. You, you have lots and lots of change and you need a platform, a security platform that can keep up with that, right? And back to what Alan said, the, the constantly recomputing based on the change is, is, is what the power is. To give is. you a sense on how large this is, and this is, so if you look at how the security model was built. Large market or the or you, Well, large market, both. People spend 95% of their money protecting the front door. Right, which has about 30% of their computing traffic goes through it. They don't spend any money on 70% of it. So we're focused on that 70% that hasn't had security before. And the good news with our models, if your security's running in, an, in Microsoft Azure, or in Amazon Web Services, or in a VMware data center in your own thing, we work across all of them. It's the classic 70-30, operations versus investment. Okay, let's step back. I want you guys okay. to help me out and for the audience to do the Illumio 101. What the, what's the product, what's the 101, what does it do? What is it solving? What's the premise, the use case? Take us through the, again, 101 of the product. I mean, it's very simple. It, what we've built, and we call it the Adaptive Security Platform. And they put the target audience in. Okay. Who's it for? It is a, so, so there, there's three communities that we, we, so we work with the Chief Information Security Officer, and we work with the Infrastructure and Operations people. And what we, we do is we let these guys get together and allow the developers to create and drive applications uh, velocity and trust very quickly. So the product is a software topology, it sits across all of your computing images, and as PJ was just saying a second ago, it constantly calculates the ideal security posture. If something changes, we change the security posture. If something scales up, auto scales, we auto scale with it. If something looks like a piece of malware wakes up, we actually alert on it and take action. So the, effectively, we are really much more like a series of bodyguards on each one of those computing images as opposed to a lock on the front door. Who needs our product? Everybody needs this product. You sound like Anybody. a vaccine. A it vaccine. sounds like a vaccine. That's Paula Long's comment. I'd rather just be the cure. That, that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the one-on-one, PJ? Give yeah. us your version. Um, Are you could add to that. Yeah, I mean, I think the the uh, is it big data software? Is it like is it a box? Is it more innovation in software? So so a lot of the innovation is actually um, understanding the relationships and the graphs of dependencies between you know what what those data center workloads are doing, who they're talking with, you know, what services they're using, um, you know what what at what time these things are happening. Understanding all of that context, gathering all that context, and actually, again, providing that level of visibility, understanding to the customer, but then being able to provide um, access control and other confidentiality services back to those data center workloads. Like Where a bunch of home whatever. monitors out there? It's like network it, management meets system management. Uh, uh, no, no. I, I, it's no. actually computing solves the needs of computing from a security point of view. Our back end, our, what we call our policy, our, it was a giant brain that is watching everything going on and making decisions. That's really like Terminator. Yeah. It's like the Terminator 2 when, the, when it actually knows what it's doing and it can constantly think. All right, so I got to ask PJ the yeah. question. So, um, Go ahead, PJ. What, would, what makes this possible today in this world that mm. wasn't possible five years ago? Because you know, you bring up, I bring up this old metaphor of network management. The reality is with virtualization and all this new stuff, commute, you can do things. So what enabled you guys to tackle this problem that wasn't around just five years ago? Or 10 years ago, whichever. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, the, the problem didn't really exist because the data centers uh, which were more, much more static. So this is a, a new problem. I mean, it is the problem that the you know that the, the cloud brings, whether it's public or private, um, and just the speed at pace at which we're, we're, which everybody's going. So it's a relatively new problem. What allows us to, I mean, what we're sort of bringing in terms of innovation is understanding and, and computing the you know, dependencies and relationships. And, there, and there's a lot of algorithms that we've sort of put in place to, you know, to, to do that, to be able to you know, calculate those, show you those, calculate those, and actually be able to adapt dynamically. And it, the, 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 being able to do it real time, right, in, in real time to be able to do that is... So you got horsepower, the computing. Is the workload shift a big driver in your trend? I mean, this idea of work outcome-based workloads and apps and, and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we love things moving around. We love things being distributed, being heterogeneous. I mean, we have customers who sit stuff in Azure and Amazon and, you know, and have data centers back home, right? That is the perfect environment for, for, for our product. The more kind of, the more. It's only getting worse, right? I mean. That's what everybody I mean, understands, GitHub announced right? today their enterprise version yeah. from local host, boom in the cloud, availability I mean, zones. I mean, John, the way you need to think about computing is the way people think about transportation, right? In the old days, you bought a car and now people use Uber, right? I mean, people are, are increasingly going to focus on what computing can do for them and not owning what the, owning the infrastructure means. Once you move into that world, you have to have a different paradigm to own it, to manage it, to secure it, and to build application on it, and that's, that's really where we come from. Okay, now let's move into more of the fun conversation around um, the buzz of the, of the launch. What was the most um, impressive thing, or weirdest thing, or interesting thing that happened with the launch? Because you guys had a really interesting launch. Very stealth, you wanted to come out, lining up your ducks, classic, uh, old school kind of launch, I liked it. Um, kind of keep everything on the tight lip and then launch big and then just drive that bus home. So what, what, what happened? How did it go? What's the results? Share some information. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you something that's really weird is that for the first time in my career, you know, we, we probably bre briefed 20 analysts and you know, the same amount number of press. People got the story accurately. I've never seen in my entire life, I must have launched a dozen products and companies in the last 25 years, I've never seen anyone get a story so accurately across the board as ours. It was actually bizarre. Like normally you're, you're, you're banging your hands on the table and go, they don't get it, I don't understand, we spent hours with them, people got it. But I think the thing that worked for us is you know, the marquee customers we led with, people knew it was real. And they really grokked the technology. I mean, what about you, PJ? No, I agree with that. I mean, it, 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 it was, you know, being able to sort of talk with people, get them to understand, get them to go from zero to, you know, understanding of what the product was, what the value proposition was, that was, it, it was great to be able to A do lot that. of people are trying to really figure out what's real. I like that, that notion yeah. because a lot, of, a lot of hype in the market, a lot of noise, especially, you know, people who are groping for, you know, technology or market position or both, there's a lot of stuff out there. You got good investors, you got some customers. Uh, again, Steve Harris, solid guy. Um, so with that, I want to ask you more of the Silicon Valley question, uh, uh, venture question, because again, you guys are very experienced and, and I really admire that. I think that's worthy of highlighting because a lot of entrepreneurs out there, the market shifts. We got to get in the, oh, enterprise is hot. Let's get in the enterprise. Share with the folks out there how, how easy it is to just win in the enterprise. I mean, enterprise is You see all these lines <laughs> under my eyes? <laughs> enterprise is easy. Come on, isn't the enterprise just like you wake up, yeah. throw some code, you know, you're up and running. I oh mean, yeah. I'm being, I'm kidding of course. Share with the enterprise. What's it take to win in the enterprise? How to launch a company? Uh, well, how see, to win with the I want to put something value. mission critical in your environment. Why don't you just throw it in and, put, and talk to the New York Times for us? It's easy. <laughs> well, I share. Mean, I mean, the Valley Valley right now I mean, certainly is very hot. There's a lot of demand yeah. in the enterprise. Certainly, converge infrastructure, the stuff that you guys are working on. I, mean, I, I think the thing that's driving us, and PJ, you should definitely jump in, is that we solve an immediate need right now. People do not trust their data centers, they don't trust their, their networks, and you know what, their business doesn't stop. So every day you read about a piece of malware hacking something, well guess what, you have to get up every day and still run your business whether you're under threat or not, whether you, you understand your computing environment or not, so I think. Well, what's your advice for entrepreneurs? Yeah. You're a vet, you're a 25 year veteran launching companies, building stuff. What, you, 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 Do 14 you, releases of software with customers, build your products with your customers day one, don't spend nine months building a beta and then just figuring out if somebody wants to use it. I and mean, you have to have some, you have to have some guts not to, to know that you're iterating through it, not to jump to conclusions, right? 
What yeah, we you, yeah. you need patient. I mean, patience is important, right? I mean, right. Uh, um, and a lot of the, like a lot of what we've done in terms of building the team is we've brought together people not from the same background, not like you know everybody from the same company. We've brought a heterogeneous set of people. There's a lot of different ideas yeah. in, in the room, and you have to you have to pay attention. You actually have to listen, and, you, and your employees need to listen. You need to listen to your customers. And that is really what has actually brought some of the innovative ideas to the table. How much feedback did you get from customers that recycled back in the product? Were you guys on this like a like a like hardcore, or what was? Give us, take us through some of the product marketing, product management, go to market. Well, I want to talk about the on-premise versus the cloud. Well, and yeah. then, so yeah. so one thing that we have done is we do we do get you know feedback from customers, but we are actually patient about it, and we need to see actually a trend uh, occurring because we get the same we get different feedback, different perspectives from different different customers. Actually, being able to see the big picture, the bigger picture, and then be able to act on that bigger picture is right. is, is what. What we was the biggest do. thing that surprised you at the end of the day? Looking back now. Whether you were like sitting there going, drinking the beer, going, we should just give up, it's not going to work, or hey, things are going to, going to plan. What surprised you? What, 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 what couple, what one thing or a few things surprised you about this venture that, that was not expected? One, th one thing I didn't realize was, um, I mean, the, the, the policy complexity problem and the policy debt that people have was so great and so you know, costly to them that it really kind of slowed them down. And having a product that allowed you to sort of move faster, be able to uh, move at the speed you needed to move, right? That the rest of the infrastructure was moving and not being able to held back. I didn't understand how big that gap actually was. That's, that's my, bi yeah. my biggest surprise. So the complexity of the policy, all this kind of like uh, infrastructure that they had, the legacy or just well, you the go, you go complexity? To you go to a large enterprise and they tell you we have four million four million firewall rules, and you go, great. How many of those rules are active? And they say, I don't know. And then they say, do you feel better? Right, and they're afraid to touch anything because they think the whole thing is going to fall apart where they're going to yeah. be opening themselves up to a range of hackers. It so, really is, it really has become, yeah. the, over the 90s and 2000s, yeah. it's become a there, consolidated there, house of cards. There, there is know? one other thing that I think, so if I, you've been to Rome? Yes. Okay, yeah. so anyway, if you've been to Rome, you know that if you go to Rome, I'm oh, sorry, Milan, not Rome. Milan. But if you go anywhere that there was an ancient civilization, you find the next civilization is built on top of it. So you go to customers that are here today, they're built on top of mainframe, then client server, now cloud and virtualization computing, and none of it goes away. And if you don't, and you can't span those environments, you can't really solve right, any so of their problems. So how do you problems. guys get a customer up and running? Is it a rip and replace, forklift? Is it just, you know, bland and expand? How does a customer move over to you guys? Yeah, All I the mean, above? The, 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 You're shaking your head, which does that mean? Um, I mean, <laughs> all of them shows up. <laughs> what? All of them shows up. Some of them are land and expand, like Plantronics, they had a brand new application. We just started there. You go to some of the New York financials, they want to talk about the entire enterprise, it's a longer cycle, and you've got to go through months and months of working with them. So, I mean, it depends who it is. If you put a brand new application in Amazon, you could bake Lumio into the Chef Puppet and Ansible scripts, and you can be up and running as fast as that application goes. But it depends on, you know, is it Greenfield or is it Brownfield? And if you yeah. don't do both, you really can't serve the enterprise. Because it's a diverse base, right? And, and yeah. different, different people, so if, if you have a much more mature product and you're sort of going in that way, people, people uh, take the visibility and, you know, and the understanding first, and then they sort of craft policy. If you get people who want to bake you in from the beginning of the uh, development life cycle, then the, the policy authoring and uh, you know, development is much more important for them. But they need both at, at, you know, at all, and, and being aligned with that whole development life cycle, I mean, that's also a bit, that's, yeah. All right, so give us the update. What's the plans? Product, market, you guys just all gassing it up right now, full throttle, promotional, your post-launch, so obviously I mean, customer we're, acquisition, we're, you're hiring, give us all of the above. Give us yeah, the, all of uh, it. Give us the facts. I, we're open for business, right? So we have, you have customers, send them our way. We, we, want, we want everybody, everybody here in this room. Yeah. I see $10 billion of computing, we can help secure it, right? We want all of that. But you know what, we want all of the computing that's not leaving the enterprise, that's not moving to the cloud too, and we want everything in between. So we're rapidly hiring people in the field, we're opening up in other geographies. And direct sales force? Direct sales force, channel partners, everything. It's all going so on. So full build out. So, I mean, we, are, we, have, we have burned the boats. We are building a company, that yeah, is what and, we're doing. And, and burning the boats isn't referring to the, burning the boats, you're stuck on the island and you have to survive and win. 
Basically. I mean, so product, give us the product view. I mean, in terms of the customers, I mean, the, the more complexity, the better, right? I mean, we because because we are you know independent of the infrastructure, we can work across all those things. So we kind of like those the, those those specific challenges. All right, so guys, what does Amazon have right, and what do they need to do better? Well, I mean, look, they've made it easier than anyone in the planet to, to establish additional computing capacity and use it in the most efficient, cost-efficient, efficient, and operationally efficient way in the world, and that's why their business is so great, and nobody has caught them to do that. Uh, what they need to do, which we hope to help them with, in, and others, I'm sure, are trying just as hard as we are, is give the enterprise the confidence to take advantage of that operational efficiency and the ease of use. And if you put those two things together, there's no end in sight well, for that. Well, the CIA announced today they're going full consumption with Amazon. That was announced in the analyst session. Um, there's other breaking news. I got a scoop I can't say I will get killed um, regarding Jeff Bezos, but that's coming tomorrow. Um, so, um, given that, will, who will be the driftwood? The cloud's an enabler, so question, final question for you guys, both to answer. Who's the driftwood in this market? Who doesn't, and if they don't move fast enough, the big, the big incumbents. And talk about like um, the enterprise cloud game, okay? Like because Amazon trying to win the enterprise, Pat Gelsinger says if you're not out in front of that next wave, you're driftwood. Um, so, but Amazon is not, doesn't have the whole package yet. But they're also not enterprise. alone, right? I mean, Google is in this business. Microsoft is in this business. Other people are in this business. I, I mean, I mean, Amazon clearly has got a huge lead in size and, and complexity. I mean, people who don't adapt die, right? And so the, the driftwood will be the people who are so wed. They have their boats. They, right. they need to burn their. You know, boats. there's this little thing called Maslow's hammer. If if you're a hammer, everything's a nail. So for so vendors in this market, it doesn't make sense if you're a startup or if you're an incumbent. If you think the only way of doing something is the way you've always done it, you're going to have a hard All time. All right, so yeah. I'm a. Go ahead. No, the, the only one is the. I mean, the people who are trying to protect their silo, right? I mean, the, the way. I mean, back to your point about the API economy and all those yeah. things. It's the people who can work together. You know, um, are the ones who are protecting those ahead. silos. You're going to get screwed, basically, because yeah, you're you holding could. on to a sacred cow that's it, get, it, going away. Exactly. Things are moving faster. All right, and so people the, are cooperating. So the real question is the money making, right? Let's talk about money making. So I'm a channel partner. I just came up today in a crowd chat I was doing on infrastructure. Where's cloud enable with tools like Illumio? Where's the money making? I'm a partner. I want to. I want to bolt on some services. Where's the opportunity oh. on top of Illumio, on top of this new model? Share with the folks out there. Well, you know, I mean, there is an enormous. Is it packaging? Is it just services? Well, I think it's all of it. There's an enormous learning curve. You say, look, I'm used to using a bunch of devices in my network. Now you're telling me to deploy the software, and it's, I'm going to do things. And I used to write things in IP addresses, and now you're telling me to write my policy in English. And what about that thing, and do I still use it? Well, that takes people, right? It takes people that, I mean, you know, I like Coursera and I like Udacity, but I also like going to school and learning from people. So it's going to take an enormous amount of people and services to make this transition, and I think that's why I think, you know, opportunities like ours are extremely attractive. Do you see, is it, you see obviously, the, obviously the human capital involved, yes. but do you see channel partners building their own tech? You see CSC, for instance, has got, they're going into orchestration, so the, the, there's a huge money making opportunity, certainly deploying with partners. Well, that's I mean, pretty, I mean, it's a boring topic. There's about 300 billion dollars of infrastructure that's jumping up in the air. And when it lands, it's not going to land in the same place. So who knows who's going to land on something. We're hoping that some of it lands on us, but you know, I think you, you I mean, yeah. this is the largest transition since we started the move from mainframe to client server. And from, from where we sit, security is the last piece that people have dealt with. There are great answers to compute. These Docker all over the place, right? There is, there's increasingly efficient, you know, there's, there's things like Cumulus and network, but there isn't a lot in security. Alan, I want to just get your final word on yeah. that. Tell the folks out there why this point in time is so exciting. Why, and, and what's how big is the opportunity? And you mentioned, and, and I agree with you, so we're at a point inflection and shift happening at the same time. And you've been there. You, I can see that you know and you want to share, but I want you to just, just say, why is this so big? What's the key force? And just paint a picture on how huge. It is really simple. Customers have never been more open to change because they've never been under so much change. In the old days, if you built a car, it would take five years for somebody to build a model and catch up. Now somebody can catch you, catch you in a year. Every business in the world is under assault and has to move faster. Customers are all looking for new paradigms from IT.
DJ, thank you very much, Alan Cohen. Yeah. Founders of Illumio, founder and chief commercial officer here inside theCUBE, Illumio. Hot startup, launched, open for business, ramping up, they burned the boats. Um, exciting to watch, great investor Steve Herod, a great customer base. Thank you. It'll be fun to watch you guys build out. This is theCUBE, we'll keep a track of you. This is theCUBE, be right back. We're live here inside the ground floor of Amazon reInvent in Las Vegas. The theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>